So now it's 2021, right? Uh, you made it through 07, 08 crash. You, you got serious about, you know, building the coaching business around 2017. Yes. And now we're, you know, 2021. What has some, go over some successes, some failures and kind of how, how you're uh, progressing here today. Yeah, I would say the first iteration of this uh, of Zero Debt Coach was, uh, you know, 2017, I went through Financial Coach Master Training. I was in what's called their preferred coaching program for about a year and a half where it's a right. subscription service and you're on, you know, you're on a list and they send you leads and your zip code and that sort of thing. And that was fine for a little while. Uh, but I knew that I didn't want to do a lot of one-to-one -one coaching uh, in the local way that they sort of train their coaches how to do that. That's a really big part of their program is they want you to work in your church and work, you know, with, you know, local networking groups and really do a kneecap to kneecap thing. I knew that I wanted to do more of a one-to-many type of business. I wanted to teach through, you know, digital courses, online membership sites, uh, maybe some group coaching, and then as a more of a premium service to do one-to-one -one coaching. So in 2018 is when I started Zero Debt Coach. And so I, that was really kind of at the tail end of me being involved with the Ramsey organization. And I really kind of jettisoned them in September of that year and really went, you know, 100% uh, into, um, you know, just building this as a platform, as a one-to-many kind of platform. So in the middle of that, I, I, I was building it as a side hustle because I was, I had gone back into corporate software sales in 2015 right. as a way to, you know, so my wife and I could pursue financial independence and, you know, we could really get this, um, you know, build our nest egg. We were gone for a million uh, in net worth. Uh, we didn't make it, but we got halfway there by 2019 when I, I finally left the corporate world for, for good. Um, and then, so I've been doing this full time since November of 2019. Got it. And talk a little bit about your, your pivot, because this is what attracted me to your, your, your channel is like you, your, your initially got in, introduced to Dave Ramsey. You go through the entire thing, Financial Peace University, seven baby steps. You become a financial certified Dave Ramsey coach. I'm certified as well recently of this year. And then you, what well, you, you start to get some, some doubts or feelings, and then you eventually you say, I'm out. So what, what got you to that point? Yeah, that's uh, a really I'll elaborate a little bit great, on that. And yeah, great and insightful question. And you're really, <laughs> you're really teeing me up to, to knock it out of the park on that one. Um, I started to see, you know, one of the things, and I'm sure you can appreciate this and anyone who's been through financial coach master training will, you know, would probably say the same thing. It's, you know, Dave Ramsey's organization. I never want to be a troll of, of them. I mean, he's done a great thing and, and I'm certainly grateful for everything that I've learned from that organization. But as I graduated from financial coach master training, and even when I was in the preferred coaching program, fielding leads that were coming in from their organization, I just started to see that his brand, his particular brand of the way that he talks to his audience and the way that he talks to their problems. And I think sort of the detachment that he has really been at this point, I mean, he's probably a centimillionaire. I believe he's worth close to half a billion dollars at this point. There's a, there's a disconnect, I think, that happens, you know, with his audience and just some of his approaches to things. Uh, and I found that as I was getting out and, and really coaching people on my own, that they didn't really, they weren't really responding to that the way that I thought that they would. I thought that I was going to be sort of like this Dave Ramsey Jr. guy, and I was just going to walk around punching people in the face, telling them that they were stupid for taking out credit cards and stuff. And it was like, oh, no, that doesn't really work. And so I went through that really started this process of me kind of softening some of the things that I believed and was teaching. And I think you have heard you talk about this before credit cards, credit score. You know, one of the things Dave Ramsey talks about is, you know, he wants to get you to a point where you don't need a credit score. And sure, that's a great aspiration to have. But most people need a credit score for you know, if they want to rent an apartment, I mean, it's a very practical thing to have a credit score. Now, do you want to bow at the altar of the credit score? Of course not. But I just think that there are some things that are, you know, kind of un a bit unreasonable and, and, and not quite flexible enough in his platform. And so the more I, I, you know, was in that program and the more I started having these conversations with students and prospective students myself, the more I saw that they really appreciated and responded better to me being 
flexible, listening to them, meeting them where they were. And uh, the other part of that was that I just didn't really buy the, the, the idea of that all credit cards are stupid all the time uh, or, or that you don't need a credit score. Uh, another big uh, departure for me was uh, with Dave was on uh, cryptocurrencies and also uh, precious metals and things like that. And, and some of the macroeconomic things that, you know, we get into as we sort of explore this as a career and try to teach our people. So I started to see that this sandbox that I was playing in was just way too constricting for me. And in September of 2018, the subscription that I was a part of, the uh, Ramsey Preferred Coaching Program, that that part of the organization called a meeting and they said, hey, by the way, this month, we're this coming month, we're doubling the price 250%. And, um, and it's for the same thing. We're not giving you anything, anything extra. And I, I had already gotten to the point where, you know, I was feeling too constrained. Got it. Uh, the, the leads weren't that was the leads the weren't good. Yeah. And, and so that was sort of the tipping point for me. You know, my wife and I were talking about it and she was trying to get me to bail, you know, before that even. Oh, really? But that was really the tipping point for me. And, and really the, the clarifying moment was I dissented in the Zoom call meeting about, hey, can we have a conversation about this? I mean, what what's, you know, you know, it's their right, obviously, as an organization to raise their rates and do whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. But the fact that I uh, expressed dissent caused them to immediately cut my subscription membership with them. No question, no conversation. They yeah. just cut me out. Yeah, I think delivery and messaging is, is key because I, when I work with my clients, people know me from as far back as when I first started my YouTube channel. I was yeah. charging I was charging seven dollars a month for the, the same name course that I have today, which I charge right. now, um, what is it, $19.99 a month is what I currently charge. It's the, it's the same name course, but there's been many additions added right. to the course. And what I try to do is I make videos that explains exactly what are the, what are the same exact things that you're getting from people that signed up early versus people that are signing up today. What are the differences? What are some new things coming in? And so I kind of got that same energy because when I initially enrolled to become uh, a Dave Ramsey certified, it was it was um, they were running a promotion. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. Everyone everyone does marketing strategies, promotions, things like that. Sure. And then they were saying it's going to be this price, which was literally double. And they were like, it's going to be the same thing. And I was like, well, what do you what, wait? Um, got it like i was like let me just you know hop in this thing now that's how my mindset was but i was like dang people that are going to join after are going to pay like double but there's there's no increase in coaching calls there's it, right there's not yeah. an increase there's, in there's no increase one. in value necessarily it's just it's now i'm just you know it's you know you're paying for hugo boss before they became hugo boss like now now <laughs> you're you're, you're <laughs> Same, same <laughs> product, but you're, you're not paying right. double. That, that's a different story in the, in the clothing industry. Right. But in terms of delivering value, I think people do want, hey, wait, wait, hey, what's up? You know, I want a little more. Like, do I get the Hugo shirt plus the socks? Okay, that makes sense. Right. You know, do I get a belt right. with it? Like that that would, you know, make more sense. So that that was my initial disconnect with um, the the program as well. And more so, my, I, I really became certified to become a synergist because I do yeah. see this whole refugee, I, I call it, these all these refugees. Oh, I think that's very, yeah, I think that's a very insightful uh, name for it, yeah. All these people that are kind of stuck in limbo, and if they speak up, everyone around them criticizes them, you're stupid, that's, you know, avoid debt like the plague, but they're looking at the the features and benefits of like, oh my God, wait a minute. Like I could potentially save 10 to 20% of my uh, expenses per year just by running it through one or two different credit cards that are mm -hmm. giving a 3% right. cash back a, a match and then a additional match at the end of the year. And then, you know, spend three grand, we'll give you another 200, like very hard to uh, uh, avoid that. And then the other thing is with, with credit, you know, I tell people cash is king without a doubt, but credit yeah. is credit is power in, in many right. different cases. And, mm -hmm. you know, leverage. I, so, right. It's leverage. And so I try not to um, uh, argue because that was my initial entering into the into the YouTube space was I was one of those people that was creating an anti 
you know, argument to, to Dave. And I was like, you know what? I started learning, I matured. I was like, this is not a good long-term strategy. Let me welcome those people who are exiting or in your case, in your video that went viral, you mentioned simply graduating. Like yeah. there's people that right. simply graduate the seven baby steps right. and then they attend something like a FinCon and they hear something about FI, fire, you know, investing, cryptocurrency, a lot of different topics. Like, oh my God, this is now they're stepping out of their their, you know, that that box that they've been in for a while, you know. Yep. So it becomes very, very interesting. But you know, I really like that you uh were open, that you started a whole YouTube channel because I, a lot of people need that. And they need a place to say, hey, I, I I think this is a good idea. Can we discuss it? And, and that's where the disconnect was. You, you can't discuss it in the Dave Ramsey camp. Even as a financial coach certified, right. when I go in those Zoom meetings, I don't voice, I don't voice my opinion because I know how right. the, the, I'm going to get shut down very quickly, you know? And oh, oh yeah. There is no, there's no dissent. It is, it has been described, um, by many people as a very cultish organization. And I really, I, I see that. I see that um, a lot now. And what's been interesting is that the Dave, why I no longer follow Dave Ramsey video was the second viral video. The first viral video I had was about the departure of Chris Hogan. Uh, and that was back right. in March. Right. And, and so that was, that was a really eye opening situation for me too, because of the federal lawsuit and all those kinds of things. But, um, I, I, I just began to see, it really just crystallized a lot of things that I had sort of internalized, you know, in the years having some proximity to that organization. And then just sort of the way that my interaction with them ended by, you know, having any amount of dissent like you were saying you know that you just know that's not going to be welcome there by any it's like you're either going to think about it this way and say it this way and teach it this way or we're just parting ways and that's just um that is really not a good way to function and what's really been interesting in terms of what you're saying about the refugees from that is that just to kind of give you an idea before that first viral video went out i had 263 youtube subscribers when the Chris Hogan video went out and I was basically just trying to do a fair analysis of, Hey, this is the, these are the facts that we know. This is how we need to be thinking about this. We need to reserve judgment to a certain degree. But if what is being said is true, then this really bodes badly for them as an organization for sure. And we need to, you know, we need to make some decisions as a community, how we're going to respond to this. And, uh, so within two to three weeks, I went from 263 subscribers to 5,500 subscribers. And then when I did the no longer, why well, I no longer follow Dave Ramsey video, that went, that took me from, I think 5,500 to like over 8,000 subscribers. Uh, and this is all within the course of like a month and a half. Yeah. So the message really resonates. Uh, it resonates in two ways, obviously, as it always does on social media, it resonates with the people that are the refugees, but it also resonates with the people that are part of the cult and are, are sort of trollish. Uh, and I, I, that was really my first exposure to the ex the potential for the extreme, extreme negativity, <laughs> uh, you know, and right. people calling me a worm and a traitor and yeah. all this kind of, stuff. and I'm like, wow, man. Yeah. Um, so no matter how fair you try to be in your messaging and how doesn't balanced matter. it doesn't matter, you know? Yeah. So that was really, uh, that was a quite a learning experience for me. Which is again, why I, I applaud, applaud you for what you've been doing on your channel, voicing your, your thoughts, your feedback, because that's what it's all about. I, I like bringing in other people that agree with me and don't agree with me on everything to help the individual, the viewer, make the best decision for themselves. I think that's, that's what it's all about. It's all about learning how to think critically. And I would say that, you know, in Dave, in Dave Ramsey's heart of hearts, I think that he would agree with that to a certain degree. You know, he's a great, he's a brilliant marketer because he understands the power of polarizing content. You know, and at, but at the end of the day, it's just like there's such a far push to, you know, in one direction with a lot of on a lot of these issues that I think even the the 
you know, even the least discerning among us are like, yeah, that doesn't just, that doesn't quite ring true. I, I remember even when I finished, you know, the first three or four baby steps, got myself out of debt. And then I looked at the rest of the baby steps. I was like, yeah, there's really, this is all, I, I know that this is going to be a much more personalized thing. And so your audience, my audience, you know, we're constantly recommending that they listen to other voices because you have to bring other strategies and other ideas into your own, as you, as you personalize your own strategy. Um, and I think that, you know, you know, what you teach in terms of like, uh, the velocity banking stuff, like, I think that's a, I think it's a good concept. I think it's a very advanced concept and it's frankly something that I need to learn more about. So I think we're just always constantly in this posture of, of learning and, and taking our acumen, you know, to the next level. And that's really the heart of what I try to do on my platform is encourage the increase of your financial acumen.